Hello, everybody. I am Chris Caligari, and I'm your host for this week's weekly uh, meeting uh, for uh, the Kubvert community. Um, let me share my screen so we can all follow along with the notes. Okay, everybody, everybody see my screen? Yes. Okay, good deal. I never know if that button works right on, on my Mac. Um, so uh, we'll go down the, the list here. If you can add in your name to the attendees list. Um, community always appreciates seeing who is attended every week. Um, do we have any new people uh, joining us this week that would like to say hello and uh, make an introduction? Sure. Um, hi, my name is Mark Deneve. Um, I've been um, recently working on some stuff with Kubvert and uh, saw this, so I just thought I'd join up and uh, see what the, the weekly community meeting was all about. Great. Welcome, Mark. I think I just uh, peer, peer reviewed one of your uh, pull requests. Not mistaken. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah. I just um, put up the one of the more recent uh, blog posts on the Kubvert uh, website. So around uh, the vGPU and the Intel uh, GPU stuff. So just thought I'd join up and see what this is all about. Yeah, I thought that was the one. Thank you so much for that. that Definitely. A great blog. Thank you. OK, uh, looking down the list. A few more people are rolling in here. Anybody else here that's new and would like to say hello? I think everybody is uh, is uh, senior people here. Okay, um, let's get into the agenda then. Uh, Daniel has the first uh, item. Go ahead, Daniel. Hey everyone, I hope you can hear me. Okay, great. Just just a heads up. Um, we, uh, as a couple of you guys probably has noticed that we lost uh, the coverage lane a while ago, which is very sad because no one knows what how much uh, test coverage we have. Um, I, we finally managed to, to re-enable this and from now on it's enabled on all PRs again. So everyone should see a uh, test that is called full qubit governorals uh, where you uh, can at least see how the lane is run and there should also be a cover all, cover IO. Um, test result on the PR, uh, which tells you how much coverage you have. And yeah, any questions on that? Okay, I think uh, then no questions. So everything self-explanatory, fine. <laughs> Thanks, that's it from me. All right, thank you, Daniel. Okay, next we have PVC auto update API discussion. Yeah, hi. Um, we had a, a few back and forth about this uh, PR and, and the, from my end, I, I have one, I think hopefully final disagreement about some of the proposal where it seems like the storage team and I might be disagreeing and David suggested we bring it up here because everybody might be here. Um, I don't know if the, the involved people read my comments. It's mainly about, uh, um, Chris, if you, if you scroll up a bit maybe, um, huh? or let people read that first. Um, so the proposal aims to add next to the source field, a, I think it's called data source field. And to me, that doesn't, sound like it would be clear to the user why there should be different source fields and and it seems a bit yeah um unintuitive and my suggestion would have been that we put the source into uh, the the reference we create into the source field and apparently there was some ideas why that's not good and i'd like to discuss that if possible 
Hi, uh, this is Mike Henriksen. Um, so yeah, I, I think having two, one field called source and one field called data source is maybe not the best naming. Um, and we can talk about that in a sec, but I think um, the idea of having of not ha of having a separate field rather than embedding it in the existing source is um, uh, well for the reasons David mentioned in there as far as like just um, code. Um, but as far as to a user, um, we're also um, we just recently added in. Uh, data volumes, um, storage profiles. So we did a very similar thing um, to those of you that are familiar with data volumes. There is a spec.pvc section, which you give the specifications of the PVC. Um, and we wanted to make it easier for um, users to not have to supply every single field for PVC for every data volume. So we have these storage profiles where given a storage class, there are certain defaults. And we went back and forth for a while on how to extend the data volume for that. And we ended up coming up with um, do, going this kind of rather than having some fields of PVC be optional that are filled in and some fields mandatory. And we, we felt that it was better for the user to just have a separate field. Um, I forget what it's called actually, but um, where they will fill in where the storage profiles um, will be utilized and this is following in that pattern as well. Um, and that was another reason why just it's consistent with um, kind of the old way of doing things and the new way of doing things um, being two separate um, to a new field. Mm -hmm. I do get the quibble with the naming though. And I, I do like your idea of having like maybe calling it source ref. Yeah, so, I, that would that, that's one of the. the oh, sorry, uh, that's basically my my take on it. <laughs> okay, um, like the the reasoning David sent to the comment was like that for you the source field is like embedded sources and this one would be a, a reference and um, one example I kind of collided for me with that is the PVC like source dot PVC because that is a reference that works the same like looks the same way to the user as the reference we would be adding just a name and a namespace or not even the namespace depending and um yeah that it seems weird to have the pvc reference in the source field but the whatever we call it reference not so okay yeah uh yeah um I, yeah, so I, I'm just seeing this for the first time, and I, I think my inclination is to uh, stick with what we've got by change the naming, but I will talk to other folks on um, CDI and, and see what their thoughts are. I definitely um, see your point. Yeah, and if you if you want to drop me an invite or like pull me into any discussions, like always feel free to do so. I'm I'm happy to discuss stuff in person whenever it helps shortcut a long text conversation okay. that might be misunderstood in the end. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Talking cool. to people speeds things up mostly. Excellent. So it sounds like the action item is you two will sort this out with the storage team, and I'm happy to support whichever direction you all pick. Sounds good. Let me know if you guys find it convenient. Yeah, it works to, me. Let me know if you guys find it convenient to open up the, the CNCF Zoom meeting. Um, I can handle that for you. Okay. Like we're, like we're doing with uh, the performance and scale SIG. Yeah. Yeah. I think that this should be, you know, yeah. I'll let you know. 
Sounds good. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, thank you, Kevin. Um, boy, uh, just uh, 10 minutes in and we're at the end of the agenda and, and empty open floor. Does anybody have anything else they want to talk about? Can yeah. I talk? Oh yeah, go ahead. You go. Yep. Hi, here's Andre from DDesk. <clears throat> we find some documentations uh, about the integration of Ovirt and Kubivirt, and this is not working as expected regarding scalability. Uh, is there someone that we can talk to regarding uh, this integration you have done? Which integration pieces are, are you referring to? Just so uh, we're clear. From Ovirt, I need to create a VM on Kubvirt. Uh, do, do you have a link um, or anything where you can, <clears throat> we can all look I, at the same thing? I can send these later. But uh, let, let me find out here just one second. Sorry, don't answer your, your wife, you are screwed. Well, um, <laughs> then uh, let me see here. I, I have it, uh, if I have it. uh this is called inside <clears throat> red hat uh, open shift uh ah, what is the name uh, uh, open shift uh, virtu uh vm virtualization something like that mm -hmm. and this was described on the over site uh here For you understand i send on the chat window we saw some code uh on uh the open shift virtualization uh for you understand okay <clears throat> But uh, we are having some 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 uh, troubles to make all, all the pieces work in a proper way, especially if we are using hundred percent of our VMs has GPU on it. The the pieces are not working so well. Perhaps we need to fix the code. Someone have done the code. We would like to know who have done the code to talk to. Okay. Andre, this is Chris. Um, you're in luck because uh, I'm actually uh, on the overt Red Hat virtualization team. And mm -hmm. uh, I have uh, two guys in my, in my uh, back end that can uh, help you with this. Wonderful. Uh, can I have your email on the chat window? Sure. Um, and I'm, I'm also on Slack, so um, if okay. you want to just but, talk to me in but, real time, then... Uh, put, put here uh, your name and your email, then I find you on Slack, okay? All right, so it sounds like we'll hook you, then, hook you up with the right people to further this discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Outside the meeting. We, uh, yeah. Thanks for the link. Uh, 
we have lots of different integration pieces that between lots yeah. of different projects. So it's always not 100% clear what people are talking about. Yeah, yeah but, we have, I have right. guys, I have guys working on this right now, actually. So this, okay. is, uh, this is very convenient. Um, minus the GPU part, um, we are uh, very, very thin in uh, GPU hardware, but uh, hopefully we can collaborate and, uh, and get you through yeah. this piece. Yeah, uh, let me tell you what the scalability we plan to reach. 100, 150,000 bare metals, 1 million concurrent users. Okay. All That's pretty you... amazing. Okay. Let's do it together. <laughs> yeah, definitely. The I'll... largest case of, of Kubvert for sure. <laughs> I like the sound of that. Okay. They, uh, they're just uh, pinging me about uh, uh, use cases for uh, the CNCF incubation graduation. It's something we need to work with. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's uh, on on me and uh, the Red Hat uh, off, Office of the Open Source Program. It's really boring paperwork that nobody wants to deal with. <clears throat> I can give you a link uh, regarding the GPU, just one second. For you have the reference, what we are using. Okay. Oh, the exact the exact model. We, how we not exactly model, but how we are we are doing the integration with Nvidia. Okay. We are using uh, forty fours. That's the, the the GPU model, and with this code here. Can you put on the on the paper the GPU information? Yeah. Yep. Uh, say NVIDIA T4, not G4s. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you put that in the chat? Um, uh, just the, the, the T and the number four. Oh, okay. Got it. That's it. <laughs> okay. We have four T4s per bare metal servers. 44. Four T4, four, four units, four boards in every oh. server. Oh, I see. Yeah, got it. Got it. That's that's it. <clears throat> yes, definitely. We'll, we're uh, happy to help you in real time on this. Um, is this uh, is seven a.m. Uh, uh, whatever this is uh, UTC two p.m. UTC? Is this a convenient time for you? I'm on Eastern time. Oh, okay, great. Um, I'm in Pacific, so. Um, we can, we can, uh, talk we can later. Yeah. I can yeah. be late also, don't worry. Okay. Great. And uh, my two fellows are uh, are in central time. They're in Texas. So it's convenient for all of us. Okay. Um, next agenda item is wide open. Um, Who wants to speak? I would like to know when gonna be next big event that the convert team gonna be on. Like Very good question. <laughs> we are we are in progress of uh, petitioning all things open in Raleigh. Um, that event is scheduled for October fifteenth, I believe. Um, we're uh, Stu and I are Stu and I are. Next on the first semester yeah <laughs> yeah it's uh we got we have some time um 
So uh, the worldwide COVID pandemic is throwing things uh, in a in a loop. Um, we're all we're all pretty nervous to to travel. So yeah. uh, that's uh, that's got the the summer and fall events in a uh, in limbo on whether or not they're going to be in person or virtual. Um, we uh, we just finished up Red Hat Summit and. Yeah, I saw that that event it was very good. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, um, we almost we had almost no traffic for uh, for Kubert. Um, we thought we were going to have our own uh, our own chat system, and we ended up getting talked into uh, the Kubernetes community, and uh, that like you know that really put us under the the shadow of such a big project. Um, everybody who joined that page wanted to talk about Kubernetes, not Kubevert. So, and then the material that we had on uh, the page itself was um, about a year old. We did, we hadn't had anything fresh in in a while. Um, so, it is what it is. Where it's the the whole virtual thing is uh, really weird. Anyways, it's. Uh, can I have the Kubeverge block uh, block for the Intel vGPU? Can you send me the link? Yeah. Um, yeah, let me get that to you right now. It's easy enough to find. Because it's our very latest blog post. I'm going to stick, here you go, put it in the chat. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. So uh, Stu and I are going to put together uh, uh, an internet-wide um, K3S cluster based on Raspberry Pi 4Bs. Um, so that sounds, both of us are got stars in our eyes about how awesome this thing is going to sound. Um, we got a, um, about half a dozen people in the community wanting to participate and throw hardware at the demo. Uh, <clears throat> then, uh, beside that, um, we're going to look at um, Supercomputing Con in November. Uh, that will be HPC and, uh, and GPU oriented. If I can help there. <laughs> well, that would be fantastic. <laughs> okay. yeah. but, uh, we are almost finishing everything uh, to release the beta version. And I would like to appreciate if you can test before we release the beta for you know. Okay. At okay. least the persons of the community, we give some accounts for you test it for you know. Okay. Yeah, that would be great. Um, my two guys are, are they do a uh, feature validation for, uh, for, for Kubert and, and, uh, um, open virtualization. So these guys get in there and, uh, and kick the tires of the car before it goes out to the, the dealership. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's my goal. All right. But behind the scenes, we have removed it right now the GPU because something is not working so well and we are having problems to make the OVG manager to talk to convert in a proper way regarding needs and things like that it's not working so well let's say that yeah so not a problem um my uh my team stand up is actually right after this meeting so uh We'll, uh, we'll get right into it. I appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> if you have any other questions regarding GPUs, we are, we are hard users of that. We are planning to move to AMD GPUs, but uh, Intel is another alternative as, as they, they became something. The mm -hmm. problem is the, the performance again, the price, no? I know for you know, AMG is one third of the price of, of, of the same performance on, on, on NVIDIA for mm -hmm. you know, on our project. 
and if you are we are we are buying half million <laughs> ports this is huge <laughs> okay oh yeah oh yeah um i don't i haven't don't recall seeing any uh any work being done on the amd gpus so someone else will have to chime in on that yeah we need to have that <laughs> Uh, they have worked with OpenShift. It's there already, but oh, okay. you port it to convert. Great. Okay. So downstream is ahead of upstream. Yes. I'm face palming over here. <laughs> well, uh, <clears throat> that's most what I, I would like to talk to you guys. I appreciate if you can uh, contribute each other to make this uh, a success because okay. we came to stay, not for play around. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I have your email, so um, we'll... I'm counting on, on Cobvert to make our solution work. Let's say that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, that's it. Thank you so much. It... I'm. I'm. For me, it's it's fine. Thank uh, you, Andre. Zoom chat. I think that's it. Okay. Um, well, we uh, I talked a little bit about events um, in that conversation. Um, Red Hat, Red Hat Summit, Fleet. Um, Things open progress. Any, again, if anybody would like to participate, we have an issue in the community repo. We would love to have you uh, on board. Um, you will be required to provide your own hardware if uh, you want to participate. I just bought a Pi 4B. I think it costed me $160 with uh, with board, case, and storage. So we have a, a link to a couple uh, hardware options here, and uh, we're also we're gonna, it's going to be multi-architecture. So if you have a Nook or uh, any other kind of uh, PC that you can. Uh, that you can use, then that will work too. We at least want uh, eight gig of memory to run a virtual machine and and uh, alongside of a container workload. Supercomputer con. Uh, and again, my my objective for Supercomputer Con is to uh, go fishing for NASA. Um, that's where those guys hang out, and uh, and they run large HPC clusters, and they have uh, they're stuck between a rock and a hard place dealing with their legacy virtual machine workloads and their their new containerized workloads, um, and they don't want to run two APIs and orchestration engines. So uh, they're counting on Kubert to, uh, to fill that gap. But of course, they want to, they want to see it working first. <laughs> That's all I have for events. Uh, what else do you guys have? 7.30, we still have uh, 25 minutes of time left. Does anyone have any uh, issues or PRs that they would like to discuss? Things that they're working on. Doesn't sound like it. Maybe this is a short meeting. Yeah, sounds like it. 
And we did a really big bug scrub last week. So do we want to uh, do a bug scrub or do we want to skip that? Uh, I would like to ask one question then since we have time. Okay. Uh, right now we are planning to use for PVC something called Rook. Um, I don't know exactly. Can you say some words how to convince me to use Gluster instead? Oh boy. <laughs> I don't think anyone's gonna. Um, Why would you want to use Gluster instead of Rook? <laughs> Rook, Rook is just a. Isn't Rook just a front end for Seth? Right. It's an operator and, and, for and, Seth. Or, yeah, an integration. Does it do Gluster also? I didn't think so. No. Yeah. <laughs> so in, in Red Hat land, there's a, a big debate going on between Gluster and, and Seth. Uh, Red Hat's been into Gluster for a very long time. So it's a mat very mature project. And Seth is, uh, is I wouldn't say it's up and coming because it's been out for like 10 years now. Um, but cluster has been out for like 16. <laughs> and the, the, the cluster, the, the question is actually, what is the recommendation for PVC? Whatever works well for you. Yeah. Yeah. Right um, now. If you're, if you're talking, if you're talking directly to me personally, I'm, um, just a massive Ceph fan. Um, I run Ceph at home. I've run Ceph at several different companies. Um, I've interviewed at jobs that have had um, 20 different Ceph clusters across the world managing petabytes of data. And uh, so uh, when, I, when I look at the technology ver of Ceph versus cluster, it's a uh, it's no question. Ceph is Ceph is a the better product, um, and then Rook just is the the Kubernetes integration to uh, to Ceph. Um, like, uh, even one of our, uh, Red Hat's products, we uh, we uh, investigated using um, Ceph as the the st underlying storage for. Um, large Galera clusters, uh, and that that performance that was in AWS. That was before Ceph even uh, allowed uh, um, Ceph to run in in cloud. They prior to a couple of years ago, it was just bare metal only. Um, so I like to think that I I uh, I stuck them in the buns and uh, and got them moving on, on their cloud initiative. <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, at at this point, I would say that cluster is just kind of like a legacy storage. Yes, uh, and, let me tell you how we are. And I don't want to stop on anybody's feet who are big uh, cluster fans. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> what, how we are getting the best IO possible for you understand. Mm -hmm. uh, let me give you one link. Behind the Rook, we are using a solution called RAM disk. Mm -hmm. uh, we have 600 gigabytes of RAM on each server. We use 256 for the VMs. We use, uh, there are, we, are, we are grabbing 300 gigs is more than, than, than 600, 600 plus. And we, with that, we grab six, 300 gigs and we create a RAM disk. And then every host offer this RAM disk to the Rook but this is the best I/O possible. Then the Rook is across the, the 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 Kubernetes cluster, and then we are reaching the best I/O possible to run the VMs uh, we are using. You understand? 
<laughs> Got it. There is also the duplication. Then the duplication make everything happen also. On Gluster, we have VGO, but we are fine with what we have on, 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 on Rook also, for you know. Okay. Uh, this means that we we are reaching the best <laughs> disk I/O possible for the VMs the users are running on. We are re reaching one million, two million times an SSG I/O. <laughs> I would love to see your IOPS graph. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have it here, but I can show you the actually session working if you would like to see it. How about we meet offline <laughs> and you can show us? Wonderful. But we are reaching one or a, between one and two million times a regular SSG, I hope, for you to understand. Mm -hmm. And this is amazing for windows the worst problem we have with microsoft windows is right to the disk <laughs> okay and we have solved it that way the solution okay <clears throat> that is incredible uh, that's why i told telling you how we are doing behind mm -hmm. the scenes the solution your so, together. Are you uh, are you guys still questioning Rook versus Gluster then? Uh, we are using Rook. Okay. But uh, I would like to be convinced to move to Gluster if it, if it makes sense. That's why I'm I'll hear you. So guys. the the your big uh, your big gain with uh, with Rook and Seth is going to be your. Uh, um, the efficiency of of disk usage and the deficient and the efficiency of the of the I/O path. Um, Gluster still has the double I/O with using the the file based um, storage blocks, and Seth got away from that with uh, with the Rocks DB and have you have you gotten deep into uh, the underlying Seth cluster yet? Not me, my my guys. Uh, this okay. is too deep for me <laughs> to, to have. I, I don't hear much talk in the in the community about Seth. Um, so if uh, if you have any uh, Seth questions, I'm probably going to be your guy. And uh, if I don't know the the answer, then I can find find out somebody who who does have it. Wonderful. Uh, I'm also integrated with uh, the Seth community. And, and they don't like me because <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but darn it, like storage is important. We can't, you can't be messing around and, uh, and yeah, and <laughs> we need to scale and scale to millions of, of petabytes. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. And, and, uh, it's, it's funny because, uh, you, you have hyperscale and, uh, and I do, uh, I have a couple of projects that I do outside of work that are micro scale. And, uh, and so I have different problems than the, than the big fish as a, as a little minnow, I'm, I have, uh, different demands and, and, uh, I, I want, uh, memory to be used efficiently. For instance, um, I find that stuff is too memory hungry and, uh, <laughs> So we have plenty of memory to, to run everything. <laughs> yeah, but then you hide problems. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm o I've only got uh my systems only have eight gigabytes of memory, but I have to run six OSDs. Um and this is for uh 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 a box that does uh like home video stuff. Um uh, for like when you you just have like a small box in your house and you have video cameras around video surveillance. That's what I'm, that's the word I'm looking for. And, uh, and I'm sure like I can do a raid solution, but then, uh, you get into custom firmwares and, uh, and 
you have to make like thing hardware is moving so fast these days i don't want to get pinned to a to a custom firmware that may not be available in a in a year or so so um sep is the best uh software solution out there uh as a matter of fact chandler is uh chatting um uh, he's a a member of my team and he asked do you have some way to back up the ram disk uh, persistent media read read the documentation of of google it's is everything there it, it, the link here google cloud compute ram explains everything it does something when when there is uh, some we need to like uh, do maintenance and things we 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 can we can uh there is a way to to do a command before because this is actually a vm on top of google if something on the bare metal host bare metal go down they are migrate to another node in the cluster uh, but there is a couple of seconds that i can uh, push the command and then like i think it is 30 seconds then i i can able to to dump to from the ram to the the local disk and then turn it off okay there is a way to do it to flush to the disk Yeah, I'm lucky in that aspect. Um, my data is mostly uh, write once, read many. So I, I don't have to worry about flushing to disk. <laughs> in fact, uh, uh, I, uh, I have my, uh, my, my deep scrub set to 90 days. <laughs> pretty, pretty wild. <laughs> Because darn it, I don't want my disks thrashing all the time. The the default settings on a uh, on Ceph will just constantly thrash your disks, and the more uh, more OSDs you have, the the worse it uh, the problem becomes. You uh, you end up drawing a ton of power and um, and abnormally wearing your disk. Chris, would you mind going to the back scrub section? Uh, I don't want to leave the people on the issues hanging for oh. two weeks. Okay, yeah, no problem. Uh, Thanks. We're at 7.45, so uh, let's go there, through. Yeah, there is enough manage, uh, be real quick. Do you want to drive that or you want me to? Uh, I can share my screen. Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, okay. So first one, VMs are stuck in scheduling due to zero out of seven nodes are available. And looks like emulation is not enabled, I suppose, since it complains about KVM. Um, Okay. As a workaround, I deleted all the word handler plans and I was able to create VMs and it's in running state. Mm -hmm. Ask about the uh, emulation. Is 
is it running on bare metal or do you have nested virtual? anybody wants to ask anything else there. CDI error creating BVC. That's a long one. Is there anything interesting there? Um, there's nothing related to convert to convert, right? I mean, this should be just CDI issue. I think it is, yes. talked about GPU, so maybe this one will be interesting. NVIDIA GPU pass through have failed. Driver error code, convert features, KVM hidden equals blah, blah, blah. But working in 040. It used to work, it does not anymore. Um, David, I see you on the thread. Do you, I mean, do you have anything to go in there? Ah, he's not on the call anymore. That sucks. Um, I don't see anybody related to a GPUs really here. It looks like they're a uh, work in progress on that one. Yeah, yeah, there is some discussion from three hours ago, so I'll fall back to neat info. Okay, okay. Um, this one looks like an RFE to Ah, that's interesting. They want to have an option to set limits on all the bots, but what we do in Cooperate is that we intentionally don't set limits on anything. Well, at least not on the on the control plane. Um, for anybody involved with the operator, does this sound like a reasonable RFE? can once, twice. Okay. Um, so let me pick some arbitrary person. Maybe David. Plus, I, I, 
Uh, last two ones for the last week. I see Daniel Heller and Nicole. I mean, is there anything you'd like to say about this one? Daniel? Um, yeah, um, <clears throat> the problem is that um, we have um, different uh, release outputs. When you are looking at the tech release and um, this is a nightly release. Also, the URL on the um, on the uh, tag release, which you see at the lower end of this uh, this output, um, has the devel inside, which is not really nice. I think this issue should be good somehow. So this is just something we need to tackle. I see. Okay. Uh, so let's keep it as a tracker and then unless anybody protests let's mark it so we don't need to go over it again yeah sorry for that next time i'm going to just um add this label oh that, yeah that, that's all right uh that's uh, great all right ba, ba, ba. this one qml and the vert logs are not attached clearly to the corresponding vm in the logs I think this is a trigger as well. Uh, we talked about it last week, I think. So the issue is that um, we don't. We have we use structured logs, uh, I believe, but we don't me really mention the VM in these logs, so it's hard to find like corresponding logs with the like VM that was being started. And this is something we want to do. So again, I would just add it as accepted unless somebody opposes. And the last one, uh, inconsistent path for node labor sh in a number image. Okay. Node labor is packaged in user bin. Are these two are linked, right? Like user bin is like bin is lit basically user bin. It's just a symbolic link. If I not confusing this. Um, da, da, da. Um, Thanks. Uh, thanks for help. Okay, all done. Yeah. All right. That uh, that takes us to the end of the agenda, and right on time. Thank you, Peter, and uh, thank you everybody for attending this week's meeting. Um, have a good week, and uh, we'll see you all next week. Bye bye. Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate. Thanks. 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 See you. Bye. Bye.